Good morning. Welcome to Church Online here at Idlewild Community Church. We're glad to have you with us this morning. What does the word fear make you think of? Experiences where you felt panic, anxiety, or dread? A few months ago, I was on the I-10 freeway between Banning and Beaumont, a short uphill section in a manual transmission car in stop-and-go traffic. At one point, all the cars around me started to move forward, but it felt to me like they were stationary and I was rolling backwards. I panicked. I pushed on the brake harder, but it didn't seem to do anything, and I was just waiting for my car to roll into the car behind me for an accident to happen. Well, thankfully, that wasn't the case. And in fact, that, that panic was helpful because it made me aware of a situation I had to deal with immediately. Have you ever thought about the fact that there's a common attribute to every fearful experience? It's isolation, separation. Fear makes you feel alone, like there's no one there to help you. The Bible says you're never alone. By connecting to God permanently and continually, you will always have the courage to overcome any and every fear. Let's praise God for his constant presence by beginning our worship with singing. Join me. Light of the world, you step down into dark. Open my eyes, let me see Beauty that made this heart adore you Hope of a life spent with you Here I am to worship Let us pray. Dear Lord our God, we come to you with gratitude and praise. 
Thank you for answers to our prayers. We are so grateful for our thrift shop volunteers and for the blessings this ministry brings to our community and missionaries around the world. We pray you will bring more volunteers. We continue to pray for those overseeing and working at the thrift shop. We praise you for all who are recovering from COVID. We lift up those who have lingering symptoms and we pray for these symptoms to depart. We pray those who are rehabbing do not become discouraged and are able to come home soon. A member who fell and broke his hip is recovering following surgery. We praise you. We pray for stamina and that his rehab leads to a full return of strength and mobility. Lord, we praise you for sending your son to us and the sacrifice he made so our relationship with you could be restored. We lift up these prayers before you. The partner of a member passed away following an infection. We pray your peace and comfort will cover the family and friends. A man has pancreatic cancer. We pray for treatment, healing, and a return to full health. A woman is in the hospital with fluid around her heart. She has recently improved with blood pressure, oxygen levels, and body temperature returning to normal. We praise you for this improvement, and we pray she will be able to return home soon. A son-in-law of a longtime member recently lost his battle with cancer. We pray for safe travels to Texas for this member. May your peace and comfort cover the family and friends during this time of grief and loss. We lift up the local arts school. We pray for more students, faculty, and staff to draw near to you, to know you and love you more deeply. The parents of the sister-in-law of members are having multiple health issues. We pray for healing, wholeness, and restoration of health. We pray for our two parishioners with hydrocephalus to make complete recoveries. We pray your spirit provides energy, comfort, and peace to their wives. We pray for families and new members to join our congregation. We lift up this nation and its leaders. We pray for your wisdom, discernment, compassion, and love on our leaders, and that they would guide this nation according to your will, returning us to the principles on which this country was founded with you at the center. We pray for revival in this world. We pray for friends and family who do not yet know your Son to be drawn near and near to you, claiming Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Lord, fill us with your Holy Spirit so that we may love you with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our strength, and with all our mind. May we continue to trust in you. We pause now for silent prayer. And we close this time of prayer by praying as Jesus taught his disciples to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Chapman College has compiled the 95 greatest fears for 2020-2021. A good number of these involve money and finance. For example, number seven, economic and financial collapse. Number 14, not having enough money for the future. 24, high medical bills. 32, credit card fraud. 49, not having enough money to pay my rent or mortgage. 79, not being able to pay off the college debt of myself or a family member. The Bible talks a lot about money and the challenges it presents. It is very easy for money to become an idol, to separate you from God. Remember, the rich man is not the man who has money, but rather the man whose money has him. Money cannot buy the truly important things, love, health, relationship. While money provides us purchasing options, 
It is faith and trust that provide courage to overcome fear. Money cannot do that. By tithing, you not only give back to God a portion of what he has given you, you also consciously, willfully reduce your reliance on money, including viewing your own money as viable future security. Let's present to God our tithes and offerings. The last time I spoke, I talked about living in interesting times. While it is true that the times are interesting, they are also fearful. Are you afraid today? Imagine for a moment that you are a U.S. citizen who has been left behind in Kabul, Afghanistan. The military has left, and the Taliban just called you to tell you they know where you are. Would you be afraid? Are you afraid of getting covid does the fear of the virus haunt you and cause you to hide from human contact? Do you fear getting older? Are you afraid you might trip and fall? Do you fear that you might be attacked while you're out? Or that you might be injured by rioters? Are you afraid for your family and your loved ones? Are you afraid of being alone? Are you afraid that you will lose your job or that you will not have enough money to live on? Do you fear earthquakes and fires? Do you fear death? Today we live in a world that is constantly telling us to be afraid. The news is a steady drumbeat of fear. We are told to fear, hate, and mistrust anyone we don't agree with. We are told to be afraid of everything that just used to be part of living life. There is a tremendous movement to take away our freedom in order to protect us from all the things that we are told to fear. Should we be afraid? Should we listen to the cacophony of voices telling us to pull the covers over our heads? Is it wrong to be afraid? Not necessarily. All fears are not bad. Some fears are good for us. It is good to fear sticking your hand into a flame. We should fear running into traffic without looking where we are going. Being afraid to go into certain crime-ridden areas is wise. Being cautious prevents us from injury and a whole host of other problems. But what about fear that paralyzes us, that inhibits clear thinking, that prompts us to irrational or even self-destructive behavior? Should fear prevent us from living, working, worshiping, shopping, and fellowshipping? As Christians, how should we handle fear? Is there a balance between caution and panic? Does the Bible give us any insight into fear? Now, in this message, we will examine what the Lord has to say about fear. We will look into the Word and find that God has a great deal to say about fear. Now, as always, don't just trust what I will tell you. Be a Berean. See Acts 17.11, and search the scriptures to see whether the things I will relate to you are true. To begin our study of fear in scripture, we have to go all the way back to the book of Genesis. Fear has been around a long time. In fact, it goes back to the beginning of the story of humankind. Now, we all know that story. Adam and Eve sinned by disobeying God. They received the knowledge of good and evil and started down the path to death. In, G in Genesis 3.9, the Lord called out to Adam and asked, Where are you? Adam replied in Genesis 3.10, I heard you in the garden, and I was afraid. The Hebrew word for fear is yare. 
And this can mean reverence or respect, but primarily it means to fear or be afraid. In Adam and Eve's case, it seems obvious that they were fearful of the consequences of their disobedience. They were right to be afraid. Their sin and lack of repentance led to their expulsion from the garden. They died spiritually, and they would later die physically. And from that day to this, all people have been born in need of a Savior. As it says in Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. As sin and death was passed to all people, so was fear. As we have already seen, there are many things in the world that make us afraid. This was also true with the people who are recorded in the Bible. Even the great people of faith. As a Jew... Abraham, Avraham in Hebrew, is my ancestor. And he is also the ancestor of every Christian, since by the blood of Jesus, all who believe in him are grafted in. Abraham is known as the father of faith and the friend of God. So, of course, he was never afraid of anything. <laughs> Wrong. <laughs> Back after the Lord had called Abraham out of Ur of the Chaldeans, and while he was called Abram, there was a severe famine in the land. Therefore Abram and his wife Sarai went into Egypt. Now Sarai was Yaphema Maod, very beautiful. And this was when Sarai was 65 years old and Abram was 75 years old. But Abram was afraid because of Sarai's beauty. He feared that the Egyptians would kill him and take Sarai. So he asked Sarai to lie and tell everyone that she was Abram's sister. Now, as you might guess, this caused problems. You can read Genesis 12, verses 10 to 20 to see how that turned out. Some time later, four kings attacked Sodom and Gomorrah. They plundered the cities and took Abram's nephew Lot as a captive. Abram took his trained servants, defeated the kings, and rescued everything and everyone. You can read about this in the very critical chapter 14 of Genesis. Then, after Abram returns home from saving Lot, Genesis 15.1 tells us, After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abraham in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. This is the first time we encounter the Lord's commandment to fear not. Here the Lord said that he would care for and protect Abram. In other words, Abram had nothing to fear. This theme of fear not appears throughout the Bible. Why did the Lord tell so many not to fear? <laughs> because they were afraid, and there was plenty to fear. The nations of that time frequently attacked other nations and killed and enslaved people. Some of these nations were particularly brutal and would conduct terrible torture. There were plagues, droughts, locusts, and famines. There were bandits. Rulers of the nations oppressed their own people. However, the Lord would intercede to calm the fears of those whom he had called, or those who believed in him. At times in the Old Testament, God would bring the Holy Spirit upon a person to empower them for the task they were called for and give them courage. This also occurred in the New Testament, where believers were empowered by the Holy Spirit to accomplish the task they were given. Some, like Barnabas, had the gift of encouragement that helped others to overcome their fears. Yes, there are multitudes of things that we could fear today. But the Lord continues to say to, say to us, fear not. This is not a call to ignore the dangers in the world. It's a reminder 
to have faith in the one who created the world. Paul in Romans 8, 38 and 39 tells us, For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor heavenly rulers, nor things that are present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Now, let's examine some other instances in the word of fear and how those involved responded. Job was a righteous man whom God blessed. Job was extremely wealthy and respected. He had livestock, servants, and a large family. God protected Job and all that Job had from any attack of the enemy. Now, this is what we all hope for from the Lord. However, after God speaks highly of Job to Satan, Satan challenges God to let Satan ruin Job's life. State, Satan states to the Lord that Job will curse the Lord if Job loses everything. The Lord then allows Satan in one day to, de to destroy Job's family, take away his possessions, and he allows Satan to give Job boils <laughs> from head to foot. But Satan is not allowed to take Job's life. Job's own wife tells Job to curse God and die. Job then has to endure the rebukes of his friends as they are sure that Job has secret sins that are the cause of Job's suffering. Yet it is clear from the text that the Lord considers Job a righteous man, and the Lord is allowing Job to suffer. In Job 3.25, Job tells his friends, For the very thing I dreaded has happened to me, and what I feared has come upon me. Now, even though Job was a righteous man before God, Job still feared that his life and his family might be destroyed. And now his fears had come true. The Lord will not always keep us from our fears. And at times the Lord will test us and teach us by our fears. But he will always be with us through those trials. Job demonstrates his faith in the Lord in Job 19, verses 25 through 27. As for me, I know my Redeemer lives, and that, as the last, he will stand upon the earth. And after my skin has been destroyed, yet in my flesh I will see God, whom I will see for myself, and whom my eyes will behold, and not another. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 14, presents a familiar story of fear. Actually, in verses 22 to 33, there are two stories of fear. After Jesus feeds the 5,000, he has the disciples board their boat and go ahead of him to the other side of the Sea of Galilee. That evening, while the disciples were struggling against the waves, Jesus comes walking on the water. Matthew 14, 26 tells us the disciples' reaction to seeing Jesus. When the disciples saw him walking on the water, they were terrified and said, It's a ghost! and cried out with fear. Then Matthew 14, 27 tells us, But immediately Jesus spoke to them, Have courage, it is I. Do not be afraid. The disciples had seen something extraordinary that frightened them. But Jesus, our Lord, calmed their fears. We then read in Matthew fourteen twenty-eight to 31 Peter said to him, Lord, if it is you, order me to come out to you on the water. So he said, Come. Peter got out of the boat, walked on the water, and came towards Jesus. But when he saw the strong wind, he became afraid. And starting to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. 
Immediately Jesus reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? While Peter's eyes were on the Lord, he was not afraid. When Peter took his eyes off Jesus, then he became afraid. The lesson seems obvious. Keep your eyes on Jesus. The Apostle Paul was well acquainted with trials and tribulation and fear. Paul was beaten, imprisoned, shipwrecked, and even stoned. So he had multiple occasions to be afraid. In Acts 18, we read that Paul went, was in Corinth. Corinth was a wicked city, and Paul faced resistance to his preaching Jesus in the synagogue. Now, Paul must have been afraid one night because in Acts 18, verses 9 to 10, we read, The Lord said to Paul by a vision in the night, Do not be afraid, but speak and do not be silent, because I am with you, and no one will assault you to harm you, because I have many people in this city. Now, this is reminiscent of the Lord speaking to Abraham in Genesis 15:1. God graciously calms Paul's fears. Later in the book of Acts, chapter 27, Paul is being transported to Rome to see Caesar. The ship has been caught in a powerful storm, and the crew is afraid for their lives. Once again, the Lord calms Paul's fears and those of the crew. And in Acts 27, verses 23 to 25, Paul speaks to the crew. For last night... An angel of the God to whom I belong and whom I serve came to me and said, Do not be afraid, Paul. You must stand before Caesar, and God has graciously granted you the safety of all who are sailing with you. Therefore, keep up your courage, men, for I have faith in God that it will be just as I have been told. Faith in the Lord is a powerful weapon against fear. So, how do we fear not? How can we confront and overcome our fears? Isaiah 12, verses 2 and 3 says, Look, God is my deliverer. I will trust in him and not fear. For God gives me strength and protects me. He has become my deliverer. Joyfully you will draw water from the springs of deliverance. The words deliverer and deliverance in these verses is the Hebrew word Yeshua, which is the name Jesus. God is not some abstract concept. He not only exists, he cares about you, and you can trust him. Proverbs 1.7 says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Hebrews 11.6 states, now without faith, it is impossible to please him. For the one who approaches God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. Even though fear seems baked into our DNA, we do not have to let it control us. Placing our trust in God gives us strength to stand against fear. Now this is an active solution. You have to make a decision to trust the Lord when you are afraid. And like most skills, the more you practice it, the better you will get at it. I was a project manager for a critical internet project at a major automobile manufacturer. I was brought in as the lead after they had failed for 10 years to deliver the project. Every Monday, I had a status meeting where 30 managers yelled at and threatened me. I hated going to that meeting. So, I carried a copy of Deuteronomy 3.16 in my pocket, and I made it through every meeting, and we successfully delivered the project. Deuteronomy 31.6 says, Be strong and of a good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he it is that doth go with thee. He will not fail thee nor forsake thee. Ultimately, if we have not given our lives to Jesus, we will have to face the greatest fear, 
as it says in Hebrews 10, verses 29 to 31. How much greater punishment do you think that person deserves who has contempt for the Son of God and profanes the blood of the covenant that made him holy and insults the Spirit of grace? For we know the one who said, Vengeance is mine, I will repay. And again, the Lord will judge his people. It is a terrifying thing to fall in the hands of the living God. Jesus in Matthew 10.28 said, Do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Fear the one who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. It is only through the atoning sacrifice and resurrection of Jesus Christ that we can be saved. We are called to love the Lord and one another. See chapter 4 of 1 John. In 1 John 4.18 we read, There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear, because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears punishment has not been perfected in love. In chapter 4, verse 12 of the book of Amos, the prophet tells the people of Israel, Prepare to meet your God. How about you? Are you ready? Are you prepared to meet the Lord? It is long past time for his church to respond and repent. It is time for us to follow Second Chronicles 7.14 and humble ourselves and pray and seek his face. If you are not a believer, then now is the time. The Bible says that you must turn from your sins. Then it says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So let me tell you from the Lord, be strong and of a good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he it is that doth go with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Let's pray. Thank you, Father, for speaking to us from your word. Lord, give us the resolve to stand in the face of our fears, knowing that you are our shield and our exceeding great reward. Go before us now and give us hearts that yearn to reach the lost, and grant that we will stay ready for your return. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.